Yo. Huh. Aubrey Edwards, Tony Shivani. We bout to party. We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Everyone and welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. This is Aubrey Edwards with one of my BFFs, Will Washington. How you doing, Will? I'm doing great, Aubrey. It's always great to be here on AEW Unrestricted with you. But yes. it's always great to be with our guest because I I love this particular guest. She has just been one of the the best blessings we've had since joining Seriously. AEW. And preach. Uh, I'm really happy to have her here on AEW Unrestricted. Uh, she is the four-time AAA Reina de Reinas champion. Did I say that right? Reina de Reinas. <laughs> there really we go. Bad I, am, I, I, I am awful at this, right? Yeah, uh, you are. As a matter of fact, edit, Aubrey, take the... <laughs> you want me to do it? You want me to do it? Yeah, okay, she's a four-time AAA Reina de Reinas champion and the inaugural MLW Women's Featherweight Champion, former and longest reigning knockouts champion in Impact history, uh, one time suspended because she was a bitch to me, but you know, we've made up since then. Uh, welcome Taya Valkyrie. <laughs> Hi everybody. I'm sorry. Aubrey. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I actually completely forgot about that. All <laughs> Just to peel back the curtain. <laughs> and then I was reading the notes this morning. I'm like, oh yeah. No, she definitely did that. I remember I was terrified for my life. And then I just kind of wiped know, it I, from my memory. When I was, like, re- when I was retweeting and, and posting yesterday about this interview, I was like, I wonder if that's going to be awkward. <gasps> no, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Our, uh, our our locker room is super awesome and definitely just like, oh, yeah, no, we're cool. We're cool. And then move yeah. on and then just like we suddenly start on. eating. We move, we move on and then we eat pizza with mayonnaise because Soraya just uh, has her. Uh, oh, my God. Will, have you seen this? this oh, stuff? yeah, I, I have absolutely seen it. But I will say yeah. that shot is such a phenomenal shot. The the shot of uh oh her of you tie yeah of her holding you up. It's such a phenomenal shot. I still love that. It's still one of my favorite visuals. The so. emotion. The emotion. Yeah. <laughs> the emotion. You screaming for your life. It looks uh, so yes. great. Yes. I was sitting there just hoping like please refs, please run as quickly as possible as you can <laughs> down the ramp and save me from this moment. Because well, if I bump, well, every bone will break in my body. <laughs> Uh, oh, but hey, God. worth it. Worth the suspension. But worth it's, it. okay. <laughs> it's yeah, great to have you. Let's move though. on. Let's actually talk to our guests here. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, uh, you made your debut in AEW, Winnipeg, yes. Rampage. Yes. Um, actually, it was Dynamite. You made your debut on Dynamite um, after uh, there was an open challenge to any Canadian that Jade Cargill had made. Uh, she had defeated Nicole Matthews pretty quickly, and then all of a sudden, you made your debut. <laughs> What was that moment like? I mean, you can tell by like the excitement and the weird dancing that I was doing. (laughs) (laughs) I was very excited, guys. I was very excited, uh, you know, like just to be there, to be in Canada of all places. It kind of is so I totally believe like the universe and the energy you put out and Mm -hmm. and uh, everything kind of just came together. for me to have that opportunity in Canada, you know, and to, to be there, to have Nicole Matthews back. I've known Nicole forever. Oh, I love uh, Nicole. From the Indies in Vancouver, from the Pacific Northwest, where I'm from. Yeah. Yay, uh, PNW. It, it was very exciting for me, and I just couldn't have been happier to be there. And, uh, yeah, the dancing was a choice, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we learn and grow. We yeah. learn and grow. <laughs> That's I was like, what is happening? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, it's it's well, fine. It's fine. I think what was cool about that particular moment was that I think for a lot of people who kind of followed your career and then had seen Jay Cargill's career for as, you know, it's it's been a very short career thus far. But for everybody who's known what Jade has accomplished in AEW, um, both of you uh, have very similar finishers and uh it was one of those things where i think um as soon as they saw that confrontation it just it clicked with people it just made sense it was like okay of course this is the match that uh that's that's gonna meet jade cargill here right and so i i feel like for a lot of people it was that almost poetic moment of like oh i hadn't thought of this before but now that i'm seeing it yeah of course yeah Yeah. (laughs) we're spelling it out for you guys uh yeah no it was really special and 
you know, Jade and I had never met before. This was our first time face to face um, in the ring, you know, in this AEW world. And it was just really exciting. And uh, to be put in that position and for Tony to have the faith in me to be able to do that was amazing. And, you know, as I said, like my work speaks for itself. I've been doing this a really long time. Um, and so I was excited to challenge myself. I think that's the most exciting thing about AEW for me from the beginning is that even though I've known so many of the women that are in our locker room for many, many years, there's so many of them that I've never wrestled before. So it was this, you know, co coming out, finding a new way to be, to challenge myself. And that's exactly what I started to do in AEW. I, I loved that day because I think we were all excited about Winnipeg just with the history of all of the people like the the Jerichos and the the Kenny Omegas and the being there and uh kind of like Winnipeg not really being a place for wrestling and I remember walking in the locker room and seeing you and the first thought I had was oh this was inevitable <laughs> <laughs> just like how could, I know it's like a surprise but not really like yeah. to have someone like you kind of touched on it but to have someone with your storied career already it was just like, of course she's going to be here. Like she's a phenomenal human being. She's so wonderful and warm and great. And now she has amazing like mango hair. So it's just like <laughs> add another friggin' cherry on top to the amazingness that is this person. And let's just like get her in here. I love it. Yeah. Speaking and I, of, I think, go ahead, go ahead. No. Go I ahead. just think like Winnipeg, like even though I like so I they think they mentioned this in commentary. Like I spent a lot of summers in Winnipeg as a kid because I would train with the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. Mm -hmm. But I had never wrestled there ever i hadn't been back in so many years because as you know like canada is a very large country so when you're working on the indies and when you're starting out you kind of especially at first you're sticking to like one side or the other kind of thing so i'd never really crossed over past the calgary edmonton zone into the prairies so it was it was exciting and and uh, just to be there again and i was so happy that the fans were there for me and i was nervous <laughs> When I heard the cheers, I was like, thank you, Canada. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. wonderful. And and uh, we'll get back to wrestling in a second, but since you touched on it, I'm going to jump ahead because like we have to talk about ballet. Like I'm here, you're here. I know that one of the days recently, like we ended up driving back and like just talking about like our history and ballet and how like, like crazy it was and how our feet are freaking destroyed for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, and I had no idea that you had uh, gone to Royal Winnipeg Ballet because I had actually auditioned there when I was younger, like 16 or 17, gotten in and went like, eh, yeah, that's kind of expensive. Not doing that this summer. Very expensive. Oh, my God. <laughs> so so what is it like training at a, a rest, at, at a uh, ballet school or a ballet academy of that prestige? But then you also worked with like Lance Storm and all, all of these other amazing legends. Like, is there any sort of similarities between the two? Yeah, uh, I mean, wrestling and ballet are so much more, they go so much more in hand in hand than people realize because, 100%. Like, you know, I mean, like when we're little kids, we're, t we're taught like so much discipline and to work really hard and you have to earn those spots. You have to get, if you want the part, you got to earn that spot. Not only do you have to fit the costume sometimes, but you have to earn the spot. Uh, so from a very young age, you know, I was put in ballet like three or four years old I was taught to work really hard for what I want and like that's just kind of followed me throughout my life and uh you know just a lot of discipline and hard work and, and the physicality the mental games all of it it all goes hand in hand and so when people say like wrestling's not ballet I find that really insulting Actually, because yes like, <laughs> thank you honestly, preach thank you <laughs> there's so many more levels to it than, than people realize so I think that even though people think, oh my gosh, like she comes from ballet, that's weird, she's a pro wrestler, really it's not. Like I come from the entertainment, dance, theater, sports background, which honestly, in my eyes, creating stories and performing on stage and performing in my entrance and performing in the ring all go hand in hand. So all those things that I did as a child, as a teen, uh, in my, you know, right into university and stuff, all helped me 100,000% to get to where I am. Well, I just got an education on ballet in There you go. Uh, <laughs> and, and and of course like it it goes hand in hand with pro wrestling, but for whatever reason obviously being uh a stupid male, uh I never even put those two things together. So, thank <laughs> you for that education. You're just an uncultured Yeah, yeah that, it's not that you're really dumb. <laughs> a little history there. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, that's great. So, um, I guess getting back to the the wrestling side of things, um, and talking about making your pay per view debut in AEW. Yes. Um, you had Double or Nothing. That was uh, Las Vegas. You wrestled Jade Cargill. That was the second time for the TBS Championship. Um, so, talk about getting that opportunity, kind of rather quickly um, in AEW. Uh, that's that's not exactly something that a lot of people get to jump right into, but uh, essentially right on pay-per-view, your first pay-per-view with AEW, it's like kind of swim with the sharks kind of thing. And not that you don't have the experience with that, but talk about um, what that was like getting that opportunity so quickly. Um, I mean, I don't view it. I mean, I guess it like it is viewed as quickly within our universe or our world kind of thing, but I feel like I worked so hard for so many years to kind of get there. So uh, I still had to, do the work when I got to AEW and have those wins and and find my spot and get there and and really get in Jade's face and be like, you want a real challenge? Like I am that challenge. I'm a multi-time world champion. I've traveled all over the world. I've been trained by some living legends, uh, you know, throughout that time. And it was it was awesome. I mean, as a dance person. I got to perform in Las, Vegas, in Las Vegas on the strip. Like, that's so cool. And seeing, like, these... I, had, I just got goosebumps. Uh, seeing, like, mm. all our logos and, and everyone's face across, you know, these billboards and on the sides of the, sta- the stadium and the arena, it, it just was so cool. Uh, you know, obviously, my husband, Johnny, was able to be there with me that day. I had friends in the audience. Uh, it was special. It was so special. And I... You know, I, it was the first time I got pyro in my entrance. <laughs> Ooh, look at you. I was, I was living my best life and I just, you know, <laughs> left it all out there. And I really wanted to put on a show for everybody because this, you know, that's this is double or nothing. Something, a show that I've been watching for years and watching you guys put together over the over time. And uh, to be part of something so monumental and to be there, T-Mobile Arena, and, and, and be able to compete for TBS Championship was a huge opportunity. Speaking of huge opportunities, I know that because you've you've been four time Triple A Rene de Renes champion, um, you actually had this crazy freaking match recently, and yes. like seeing all the pictures of your just bloodied face, like I love that stuff just because it's something that from a women's representation standpoint, like we typically don't see women in such a role that is where you're sort of in this is spot where you're bleeding and you have this violence and whatnot. Like, what was that moment like for you? Um, I mean, obviously triple mania has been a huge part of my life for, I mean, I think yesterday was the ninth anniversary of me winning the first Reina to Reina's championship. Uh, when I had my nose broken, there's some pictures of me bloody there too. Uh, yes. you know, uh, it was, that was very special because I was, you know, the first ever, uh, non-Mexican born woman in the history of AAA to win the championship. So it was huge accomplishment yeah. for me. Um, so to be there like practically exactly nine years later and doing it again, um, in the same arena, La Reina Ciudad de Mexico and to be doing it in front of all my peers and Conan, who I you know, have a massive amount of respect for because he's like my wrestling uncle and he really was one of the first people who gave me a chance and uh, allowed me to show what I could do, you know, 10 years ago in Mexico, which is crazy. Uh, You know, it was it was really surreal and really fun. And I do think, like you said, it's so important for people to see the different layers and different types of women's wrestling that there are. Am I having, you know, these crazy no DQ death match kind of matches all the time absolutely not uh i think it's that they are, can be sprinkled in amongst a, in a story or you know be the culmination of this rivalry uh so it was really really fun for me to do that and i got the nickname when i look up for a reason and i like to remind people sometimes that yeah i mean i'm not just the girl in furry white boots married to johnny tv i <laughs> i I'm a badass, and when I when given the opportunity, I love to show that grit, to show violence, and show these levels of uh, of what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a performer within our world. Super great, super great. This is such an awesome conversation with Ty Valkyrie here on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, we've got so much more to talk about all of her amazing time thus far in AEW. Stay tuned. Fall is now upon us. And that means that from now until the end of the year, the world is kicking into overdrive to feed us everything under the sun. 
And that also means that there's not a better time to keep an eye on those fitness goals and keep yourself on track. And that is where the FitBot app continues to lead the pack. Last year, I went on a weight loss journey with the FitBot app, losing 30 pounds. Now my fitness goals have changed from burning fat to building muscle. And no matter what your goals are, you want a program that's smart enough to change with you. If you're looking to push your limits at the gym or jumpstart your fitness routine, FitBot can help. FitBot's powerful technology understands your strength training ability, studies your past workouts, and adapts to your available gym equipment. It learns from your previous workouts and adapts as you improve. It's the perfect companion to help you crush your fitness goals this fall. Keep track of your achievements and personal bests with FitBot's progress tracking charts and learn new movements the right way with over a thousand HD demonstration videos. A full year of FitBot is less than the cost of a single session with a personal trainer. It is not too late to crush your year in fitness goals. Try FitBot today, get 25% off your subscription or try the app free at fitbot.me slash AEW that's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash A-E-W. A-E-W Unrestricted, Aubrey, Will, Taya. This has just been an awesome conversation. We've talked ballet. We've talked wrestling. We've talked debuts. We've talked bloody faces. We've <laughs> talked so much, so much already. But like you, you joined A-E-W in March of this year. It's, it's been roughly six months or so. And you've already had these incredible matches. I want to talk about a couple more. Uh, Battle of Belts, Calgary, again, Canada being such a, a big place for you and having, you know, that be your home territory. You challenged Tony Storm for the AEW Women's Championship. You lost, but it was an incredible match. And I think it's it's one of those things where you're given so many of these opportunities, challenging for belts out of the gate with your reputation. What did that ma- match mean to you that it was maybe different than your matches with Jade? I mean, did I lose? Because half the world didn't even see the finish because of the weather. <laughs> oh my God, oh, that's, that's right. right. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Calgary, oh my gosh, where do I start? Like, I was 17 when I moved to Calgary. And when people are like, well, you're from Victoria. And I go, yes, but Calgary is where Ty Valkyrie, the wrestler, the character was born. Because that is where I moved, to, you know, 17 years old, went to the University of Calgary and the Alberta Ballet uh, School um, to follow my dance career um, and lived there for over 10 years. That's also where I started training with Lance Storm. And it's where my, you know, my best friends heard me for the first time utter the words, I think I want to be a pro wrestler. (laughs) So those two women that you saw in the front row, those are Mandy and Sherry. They're two of my best friends. We've known each other since we were 17. Uh, They brought me to my wedding. They, you know, people say it takes a village. It really does. Even though we haven't lived near each other in many, many years, we are still very connected and best friends. And they really picked me up even over the phone when I was living in Mexico, when I was, you know, in tears going, I don't know what I'm doing. Like they've just been there to support me through a lot of things. So it was really important for me, for me to have them front row and be there supporting because I know how much they were invested in the entire, the entirety of my career. I had so many friends there. It was crazy. I mean, I just remember you know, always going to the Saddle Dome. The Saddle Dome just, yeah, represents so much history. The Stampede Grounds in general with Stampede Wrestling and all the history that is in Calgary when it comes to pro wrestling, it just has such a magical vibe or something, you know? And I went to so many Calgary Flames games there. I've gone to concerts, Jay-Z, Backstreet Boys, uh, uh, Molly Crew, Ozzy Osbourne. Like I've gone to so many concerts in that same venue. So to be the girl on that stage, looking up at all those seats that I just remember, you know, like I think I watched hockey up all the way up there in the nose <laughs> when I was 18, you know, like it was just really, really special for me. And, uh, you know, I took the opportunity as it was given to me. I lived my best, uh, Canadian Barbie Trish Stratus, uh, life in my year. I was living in, you know, my own little fantasy world and I just loved it. And I wish I could do it over and over again. And also the fact that it was Stampede time, which I was so excited that so many of you at AEW got to experience Stampede for the first time. Uh, it was just, it just, you know, put the cherry on top of my little Calgary Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a, a, that was such a a weekend in general. And um, that was my first experience with, with Stampede. So um, same, same. yeah, it just, 
seeing all of the cowboy hats all around and i'm like what is going on here and oh, yeah. uh and g getting the experience wow. i went to to <laughs> to brett hart's uh to his bar afterward and that yeah. was a hoot as well so like everything about it i i I honestly, if I could do Stampede every year, I absolutely would. And I was yeah, glad to see do. that you got that opportunity there. Yeah. Um, so talking match wise, uh, you kind of went on a run of getting to face some of the most uh, prolific champions that AEW's had, right? Because you you faced, uh, we talked about Jade Cargill, um, and then you got this match with Tony Storm. Before that, you had a match with Hikaru Shida, uh, which actually... Um, if I remember correctly, and I do, uh, that got the wheels in motion toward her championship uh, run. That was pretty much the match that you got her yeah. on, on on the path to winning the the championship. You also faced Britt Baker recently as well, um, and so and a lot. All of these were all first time opponents for you. These were all people yeah. that you hadn't stepped into a ring with, and so these Sky were all. Blue. Sky Blue was in there as well. Um, mm -hmm. First yes. time matchup on collision my debut on collision yeah it's just been these first time matchups over and over again which is really exciting uh you know and i hope that i well i know that i will have the opportunity to repeat uh, uh, most of all of those uh in the future you know i'm here i'm here to stay everybody can't Yay. get rid of me. uh and that's what's also exciting because you know there's always those times when you get in the ring with someone for the first time and you're kind of feeling each other out and figuring out how it's going to go and and uh you know, I've been studying and watching these women for a long time, even though I wasn't in the company. I love what we do. I love pro wrestling. I'm a fan of it. Uh, and if anyone who is in this business says they're not a fan, what are you doing? Uh, you know, so I have been watching these women for a long time. And so to be faced, you know, across the ring from all of them was, was really special. And I can't wait to do it again. So. I'm curious a little bit about, and we'll, we'll kind of take a step back into the past, because you were also on Lucha Underground, just just incredible show that was doing new things in wrestling that hadn't been seen before. But one of the things I always find interesting about Lucha Underground and talking to people about it is just kind of how it was filmed and how it's very different than something like live TV. What yeah. was your Lucha Underground experience like? Um, I always look back on Lucha Underground as some of my favorite years in my career because it was really a bunch of us if you look back and a lot of us are all together again i mean i swear there's a core group of us that are just you know the swerves the brian cages the ty valkyries like we are at the Rosa, are like, fox yeah the like rick knox's knox mm -hmm. yeah uh we've all been together in this crazy kind of hurricane uh for a long time and it's really cool to be all back together again you know it was our first big break for a lot of us and I was coming from Mexico, you know, Phoenix, the Pentagon also as well, were, were there, um, you know, it was our first big break and coming from another country and getting that opportunity was such a huge deal. And I will never forget the first day I was greeted by Chavo Guerrero, who showed me around the temple for the first time. And I just think back on like how innocent and nervous I was <laughs> and excited. And like, I always try when I'm having like a really good day or I had a really good match or something really cool is happening in my career, I always try to be like, please hold on to this moment. Because, you know, as we know, there's going to be really bad days and there's going to be days when you don't want to get out of bed or you're upset about how something went on or you didn't like your match. But like, if we can hold on to those kind of magical moments, it really kind of grounds us and like helps us remember who we are and kind of move forward through those hard times. So like, I'll always remember that being so special. And uh, there was, you know, the first time the world got to see me and it just like Winnipeg. I remember being backstage about to do like the run in to save Johnny Mundo at the time uh, and hit Brian Cage over the head with a lead pipe being like, uh, <laughs> are people going to know who I am? Like, I just, you quit. You don't know. Like, what if there's zero reaction? Uh, and I came out, ran through the temple. I remember like I was wearing like a pink, black and white gold covered outfit i don't know something crazy uh and everyone started chanting we're a loca and i was like oh my god they know who i am like <laughs> so it was really really special and all of us you know filming that style like you said of real like real television all the vignettes were done um with cameras front back different angles we were ended our scripts we were having to you know come in on days and, and to film one of those backstage vignettes for example um in Dario Cueto's office would take hours because we were doing it from so many angles, just like you would see a, a, a television show that is produced in that way. 
Uh, so it was really fun and we got to really do some crazy stuff and have some crazy matches, intergender matches. That's where I met, obviously, John. Um, and the rest is history. <laughs> Here we are. It's, it's great history, though, because like I, I was a really, really big fan of Lucha Underground. And that was where Amazing. I uh, became exposed to a lot of people, including you. That was uh, the first time I had ever seen Taya Valkyrie. And that was, uh, I think... A, a, a very unique way of presenting professional wrestling, still something that hasn't been really done since. And uh, it gave, I think when everybody gets to look back at those memories and see like, well, every time we do something in AEW and it's got even the slightest hint at a reference to Lucha Underground, people uh, pull up the memories, they pull up clips, all those things. And it's always such a great time in wrestling that, uh, like you said, it, it gave exposure to a lot of people and gave opportunity in a way that wrestling hadn't before. And it was a time that wrestling needed it. And uh, so uh, hats off to everybody who worked on yeah. Lucha Underground. I'm always going to praise that as long as I can. I think it also kind of opened people's eyes that wrestling could be done a certain way, a different way, sorry, could be done a different way and shot a different way. Um, just even the way that the, they filtered the grittiness, uh, you know, because it was produced obviously by Robert Rodriguez. Um, the way it was filmed was just so different from anything that we'd ever seen before. And so I think that that really opened people's eyes to the cinematic matches that have now we've seen over the course of the last several years um, and doing things differently and how you can develop characters and there can be magical power. I mean, I love a magical angle. Okay. Yes. Like <laughs> yes. If there's magic and dragons and people coming back from the death and time traveling, I am like all for it. So all that stuff really like came out of Lucha Underground and uh, to see it and for people to be pushing the boundaries of what we think professional wrestling is, I think is fun and amazing. And this is art, everybody, you know, it like, is. you know, so we're trying to create moments for every fan. Uh, may it be that you like it or you don't like it or you agree with it or you do. This is what we do. So all, I invite all these different ways of viewing it as professional wrestling because I think it just makes everything so much more interesting. You you mentioned people coming back from the dead and, and it jogged my memory about this little thing that happened in Impact where you're arranging the murder of Johnny Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I said I love a good mat. I love some magic. <laughs> yes, yep. yes, yes. I went so, to jail. I came back from jail. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. So, so talk about uh, putting together a murder plot in wrestling. <laughs> I mean, when you have <laughs> such creative minds, such as Jimmy Jacobs there with you, who now I am so happy that we have him at AEW. Oh, yeah. uh, you know that you can expect the unexpected. And, you know, we didn't really know where I was going to be going or what I was going to be doing at that time. That was also, you know, towards the end of of 2020 when things were crazy in the world. So we were trying to find all sorts of creative ways of entertaining the public. And uh, apparently I decided to try and kill Johnny Bravo at his own wedding to Rosemary from the undead realm. Yeah. <laughs> it just, you know, it just is so fun. And I love being creative and coming up with stories that make people go, what? Huh? But also just, are so entertaining and different. And Jimmy is one of the greatest minds um, when it comes to characters and, and creating these scenarios that make people think. So, you know, I have Jimmy and Robert to thank for that because uh, they were a huge part in it. So, and of course, Rosemary, because she is one of the coolest people that I know and one of the most creative layered characters I've worked with. So she's awesome. <laughs> Uh, and of course, after that, uh, I want to get into this before we, we get to our next break, but you had a, a brief stint as Frankie Monet. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. and who is so, that? <laughs> I don't know. This is a random chick. Uh, well, first I did want to ask you a little bit about the name, um, in that, uh, so was that a creation of yours? Was that one of those names you were handed? How did the name come about? So they... You know, pretty quickly we decided like I needed a name. I was fighting so hard for Ty Valkyrie. Oh my God. I went to bat for her like over and over again and just kept getting no, no. <laughs> like even variations of it. I was gonna use my my shoot name and or like my first shoot name and then Valkyrie. Like I was 
trying all these different combinations of things because I just, you know, this is who I've been for 12 years, almost 13 years. Um, and I felt like that's who the fans know, which made it even harder because I felt like Taya kind of died for a second, you know, like she kind of was taken to jail. Like it was, she was nowhere to be seen. It was just, it was, it was crazy. Uh, but I did come up with the name as much as people are like, didn't like it or liked it, but like, that's part of it. You know, I can't make everybody happy. This art is subjective. Uh, so Monet, which is because I really wanted something different. I have been an artist my entire life. It just kind of it went along with, you know, the, the, the artist Monet. And that's kind of where that came from. Because like, I have all these memories of my dad's from Switzerland. So we traveled a lot to Europe all the time when I was a little kid. So we would go to art galleries all over Europe all the time and do a lot of that. So that's kind of where that came from. And then the Frankie name is I've always liked kind of gender neutral names. I've always thought that they're very cool and different, like girls named Kyle or Ryan or, or different things like that. So uh, that's where the Frankie name came from. I'm also a huge fan of horror movies and all things blood and guts and things like that. So it actually comes from also the movie Stigmata because the character's name is Francesca and they called her Frankie in the movie. Hmm. I did not know that. That That's actually really cool. I don't think it was that, because, y- yeah, you mentioned people kind of harped on the name. I don't think it was anything against the name specifically. I think it was just that so many people knew you as Taya Valkyrie, and it was just like, yes. yeah, we aren't seeing Taya Valkyrie in front of us anymore. We're seeing Frankie Monet, but like it almost feels like an insult to tell us that this person <laughs> we've been seeing all these years know, is I not know. Taya Valkyrie. It's and- to be fair, like, Ty and Frankie like look the same. The gear is the same. The, like, the whole, everything was the same. Um, but yeah, I think d- I definitely agree with you that the fans were just like, "Do you think we're idiots? Like, we know that that's Ty and Valkyrie." Like, and <laughs> like keep my nickname too. So it was just like a little, you know, people don't like change, especially when they've known something or someone for so long. Uh, but you know, I, you know, was given the ball and I tried to run with it. I tried to run with it and I did my best under the circumstances. And I, I, you know, I'm the first to admit that I was there at a very crazy time, uh, a time in the, not only within that company, but also within the world that we existed. Yes. Uh, I yes. don't think I was given a fair chance at all, but um, just like I said, like I had to hold on to those moments when I was super happy and when I was super excited. And uh, I've said this in an interview before, like I remember saying to John, like when I first started there that I felt like, I was Charlie from Charlie and Chocolate Factory <laughs> when I walked through those doors. And so I actually bought myself a copy of the book because I wanted to remember how I felt on that day, knowing that there are going to be days that are going to be horrible and sad. And they, and guess what? That did happen. And I did have to like remind myself of, remember when you felt like you were talking to Willy Wonka, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I, you know, I, I hold on to some things from, from that time in my life. And I like to forget a lot of them as well, but those are the things that make me who I am and, and who make me the resilient, stubborn, passionate idiot that, <laughs> that I am that just loves doing what I do. And, you know, I'll take all those layers of cake if they're good or bad in order to get to the top. So it all worked out in the end. I got to, to do that. I got to meet my heroes and sometimes you shouldn't do that. Uh, and I got to also come <laughs> back. What? It's true. I'm not, am oh, I it's saying? I'm laughing because it is true. It's so true. It is true. Um, and then I got to come back. I got to go to the Indies where I, you know, put, dug my heels in, became the, you know, the biggest comeback of 2022 by PWI. I was in the top 10, won cha- five different championships all over the world and really was like, I want every single person that didn't believe in me during that year that every time they turn the TV on or they watch a a pay-per-view from any different variety of companies or anywhere in the world or anything, you know, on Fight Network, like to be like, oh my God, there she is again. Like they couldn't get rid of me. Like I was like, hello, I belong. Like (laughs) I just had to remind everybody of who I was and, and that's exactly what I did. And I was so determined and I knew that it would work out and like it did. And here I am with you guys now. So it's not without like a lot of tears, a lot of blood, a lot of travel, a lot of like sadness, and, but also just like a lot of happiness and just excitement for like this new step and having these new challenges within AEW. 
Oh, I love all that. And I'm loving that you're getting to remind the world of who you are and you're doing more of that. And we're going to keep doing more of that because we've got Taya Valkyrie right here on AEW Unrestricted. More after this. Unrestricted. AEW Unrestricted. Aubrey, Will, Taya. I think that's exactly how we came in on the last break. But I don't care because we're here having a wonderful conversation with Taya. Um, you've, you've obviously worked lots of different companies, had lots of different storylines you've been involved with lots of amazing matches and moments and opportunities but this is obviously an AEW podcast uh now that you've been here for a little bit I feel like you've kind of settled into our locker room and our our cool little team we've got here what would you say is your favorite part about working at AEW just how accepting and positive people are and people like to harp on the other side of that so much that I'm just like I my experience has been especially coming from all these different places where sometimes people are not the nicest and sometimes people want to see you fall on your face immediately uh it is not like that and I just and also just Tony is so positive yes <laughs> like I don't know what else to say like I you know, have had bosses in the past that have also been super, super positive, but also there's some of them in there that have not, or, or women that have wanted to see me thrive and others who could not wait to watch me fall on my face. So it is so cool to be in a space where I can really be myself um, and not be concerned that just being me is enough. And you know, all my quirkiness and weirdness and crazy ideas and dumb jokes uh, <laughs> and crazy <laughs> ideas and my crazy wrestling ideas are accepted. You know, like no one has to agree with everything, but it's just, it's just been like a really positive environment and being in a space where I did know so many people and being reunited with the Lucha Bros and being, you know, yes. being my husband there and being in a space where you know, everyone's really trying to work together and wrestling is chaotic and that is mm -hmm. that goes across the board. It doesn't change. It is the same way everywhere. Uh, but we are all grounding ourselves in the chaos. And I think that uh, we it's really cool to like have each other to lean on and to know that, you know, if we want to get in the ring early in the day and roll around or we want to pitch an idea or we want to uh, hang out afterwards and talk about more creative ideas or whatever that is that everyone's really open to it there's not a moment when i'm thinking like oh my god this person does not want to deal with me right now <laughs> you know it's been like uh, it's been a really positive experience for me uh and i just i feel like i'm just getting started like you said you know it's been like five and a half six months now i do feel like i'm finally finding my footing i've had like these crazy great opportunities but i just know that that's only scratching the surface of what i can do and i just am open excited for what's next and you know especially with like what happened to this past weekend in triple mania and losing the reign of reigns championship you know four reigns nine years you know i really feel like it's this new like it's this new chapter again that's starting in my career in AEW. you know the intro to that book has been closed and we're ready to get to the, you know the meat and potatoes and get to work and i'm excited for that yeah no honestly i i fully agree with that and uh, cause I think I came in like right after you did. And so, yeah. uh, and you were actually one of the first people I talked to, uh, like, I think it was like my first day and I was like, just trying to find people and I saw Ty and I was like, okay, uh, let me, let me strike up like, conversation right. with her. <laughs> right. I remember. It yeah. Fun. It was like right outside the ring. And, uh, when you were like nervous. You were like, <laughs> yeah, it was like first day of school. What do I do here? I'm like, I don't <laughs> know anybody. Like, it's still like the first day of school. I always said like, uh -huh. What I to John, I was like the first day, like I, I'm like, where do I sit in catering? Like which, uh -huh. which lunch table am I gonna sit at? Like it's like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, so I, so, did. I remember. Yeah, so I I just wanted to to say I appreciate that in the sense of you hadn't even been there that long, but to kind of pay that forward, that idea that this is a, a really cool environment and it's just full of cool people who are super positive, who are constantly high fiving about just cool shit happening. Uh, I, I love it. And I wanted to thank you for that first oh, time. Of course, of course, we've all been there. We all know how it feels. 
<laughs> I, I also wanted to turn to some fan questions because uh, yes. we posted the question on Twitter and I thought we got some pretty good ones. I wanted to read yes. this one because uh, this one popped me. This one's from Zombie Jones. Uh, it says, what's it like being married to a guy with so <laughs> many last names? Uh, because, and I want to add to that, which one is your favorite? Because we've had Johnny Nitro. He's been, as we mentioned, Johnny Mundo. He's been John Morrison. He's currently Johnny TV. He was Johnny Impact. He uh, was Johnny uh, Elite I, for like one week. Yeah, Johnny Elite. Yeah. Uh, so man I, of many names. He's man he of many Johnny names. Uh, I mean, I'm going to just go on a limb here and say that my favorite last name is the one he's using tonight because he is finally being called Johnny Valkyrie. <laughs> oh, oh that yeah. rules <laughs> yeah no i i mean i i fell in love with johnny mundo obviously i married johnny impact and now i'm living with johnny tv and married to johnny tv so it's i'm so used to it i'm just i i think it's funny a lot of people are like i don't you know of course if people have problems with everything that's fun uh so <laughs> It's funny. Like, hello, he still looks like he's 21 winning Tough It Up. Like, it's just the same person. <laughs> it's not that deep. No, I love it. I think it's funny. I think he's having fun with it. And he also is just like me and overthinks, like, every layer of everything. And everything. <laughs> he comes out, the way what he's wearing, the way his hair is, the music, the, everything. So I, I just love it. And I think that Johnny TV is just another evolution of that. And, uh, I'm excited to see what he can do. And I know that at some point, Ty Valkyrie and Johnny TV will be reunited and take over the wrestling world. So, oh, it's it's right. inevitable. I like <laughs> that uh, him, him using uh, Johnny Valkyrie just like makes my feminist heart sing. I'm like, yes, this is wonderful. Honestly, I, I can't believe that hadn't even occurred to me, but that name is no. awesome. It's Hello. so great. Yeah. Yeah, that's and so then, great. And, I mean, uh, Ty knows for years. <laughs> yeah, like Liz, who owns a Vavoom here in Los Angeles. Obviously, the company has been going on for like plus twenty years. Uh, when when he started coming to Lucha Vavoom, she was like, "Do we call him Johnny Vavoom?" And I was like, "Johnny Valkyrie, Johnny Valkyrie." <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we're gonna have it. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, we have a question from uh, Jeremy Slangle, uh, and something that I was very interested in. Uh, because I love your gear. It is very iconic Taya Valkyrie gear. I don't think I ever see anyone else wearing kind of like the style of singlet you wear and the boots you wear. But Jeremy has a uh, question. You have the most fabulous and iconic boots. When did you start wearing that style and how did it come about? From day one. Because originally, in the lore of Taya Valkyrie, uh, she was a Viking princess. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's when Nicole Matthews met me. Uh, it was, I had brown, brown and gold singlets on with brown fur boots and this brown furry shoulder. Like, I was deep in the Viking wow. stuff. Like, I really wanted to be a Viking princess. And so that's where that's where it came from. And it just has evolved now into the, you know, white furry or black furry <laughs> boots that I wear. Um, and I just I and also, I mean, this is kind of just like a funny history note about that, too, was like when I met Carol Guayo Jr. in Mexico City, he was so taken aback by the fact that I wore fur boots because his dad and their family wrestled in fur boots for generations. And that was, we didn't even know that when I met him and when I became part of Paris Del Mal. Same with Conan. There's actually a photo from an old Lucha Libre magazine out there. I gotta try and, I'm gonna try and find it. Uh, and he's literally wearing gear that could have been like the male version of like my first gear. <laughs> like brown fur boots, Conan El Barbaro. Like, and he had the furry shoulder piece. I, I was like, wow, the universe is crazy. <laughs> So it has just kept going because it's just part of me at this point. So uh, I love that. I I wanted to ask uh, this one here. Uh, just curious from LKW Artworks wants to know what are some cultural differences from when you first wrestled in Mexico that are part of your everyday life today. Ooh, good question. Cultural differences. I mean, 
I feel like the Lucha Libre style in general has like consistently, like obviously influenced me um, in the ring. Uh, culturally, like, I mean, I, I learned Spanish. I lived there for five years. It's ingrained in me now. The people that I met there, I mean, I've been friends with like Pentagon and Phoenix and I have known each other for 12 years. And we basically started in AAA literally around exactly the same time. I remember when Pentagon was Dark Dragon and Phoenix's mask did not look like that. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I think that those are the things that I've taken from my experiences there more than anything is just having this incredible family and support system that we've all known each other and seen each other come up from nothing basically and taken those 17 hour bus rides to and from different shows in Mexico and travel day in and day out. Um, those are the biggest things that I take away from it. And I'm so thankful for it. And it really, you know, I might not have been born into Lucha Libre or into pro wrestling. Um, you know, I'm a girl from Canada, <laughs> like, but I learned so much from my time there. And I feel like that is, it's part of me. So Speaking of Canada, we have a question from Scott Webb. With so many Canadians in AEW, we have Omega, Jericho, Christian Cage, Menard, Parker, a lot uh, of Bunny, us, yeah. well, the Ethan Page, there's so many. Uh, do you share any sort of special camaraderie with the Canadians? Um, I think more than anything, uh, the person I talked to the most out of all of those people uh, that you listed would definitely be Bunny because we oh, I love her. have known each other for many, many years. I remember we had like, a, like a WWE trial together like 11 years ago I think was the first time Whoa. that I her. yeah like it was a long time ago we even were part of Team Canada at the Lucha Libre World Cup when we uh you know several years ago I don't know like five six years ago uh we've just seen each other go through so much and watched each other grow and like we're obviously from different sides of the country so we didn't know each other prior to prior to those experiences uh or we never really got to dance to wrestle each other in the indies but we worked together at impact uh so yeah i definitely i love me some bunny <laughs> who doesn't love themselves obviously some bunny. Chris Jericho and all these all these amazing people like christian cage and i mean i've been watching them for years you know like every time i put a ponytail on top of my head i went a half ponytail <laughs> like, I, I call it my jericho pony like it's just that's y2j like that's that's part of it you know we all grew up watching that i just you know so i mean i'm just so thankful to have such iconic people in our locker room and kenny omega don Callis, everybody everyone's just been so cool and to see canadian pro wrestlers being given this opportunity is awesome because it is very hard for us to break out and uh you know get out of of canada we often have to move to different countries like you know how i had to go to mexico or go to japan or go to europe to be seen because the country is so big and it just our population is not that big. Uh, and so you have to kind of make things work because, you know, we can't just come to the States and work. We have to, you know, be be found in these other places. So I love seeing so many Canadians uh, getting that opportunity. Yes, it's, it's so great. I love it. I love seeing amazing women getting opportunities. I love seeing strong, badass women on TV. And I just love being able to work with you. A, a suspension aside, we'll kind of just forget that little moment there. Um, it's fine. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> Outside of that, like I could not be more thrilled every time I see you at work. Like you're Aww. such a wonderful person. You're such a wonderful addition to our locker room. And I'm so happy that you're finally at AEW. I know, I know that's like six months later, but it's, I'm just so happy you're here. It's, it was inevitable and I'm so happy and I'm so happy that you were able to join us today. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, being at AEW, I earned that spot. I earned this uh, position and, uh, you know, hard work does pay off and, uh, I'm proving that. So I am very excited to be here to be with you guys today. Uh, you know, and excited for what the future holds. Yes. So, yes. I am thank so you. excited for it as well. Thank you. Same. Ty Valkyrie. You can follow Taya on Instagram and Twitter at the Taya Valkyrie. And of course, you can listen to and follow this podcast, AEW Unrestricted, at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can check out video episodes on our YouTube channel at AEW Unrestricted. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. AEW Dynamite Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on TBS. AEW Rampage Friday nights at 10 p.m. on TNT. AEW Collision live Saturdays at 8 p.m. on TNT. And of course, ROH is streaming on Honor Club every Thursday. I'm Will Washington. She is Aubrey Edwards. I'm, a I'm or Aubrey. I'm Aubrey. 
Yes. <laughs> it's fine, whatever. Whatever. We'll see you <laughs> yes. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>